Bruce, I would like to believe that there is something non-physical about the mind, something that the brain needs uh, in addition to all of its capabilities to make consciousness, to, to make what we are. I can't tell you that I've found anything of that nature. Uh, but what can we discern? How, how can we begin to ask the question, to pursue that? Is there anything non-physical about the mind? Well, I, I, I'm over the position that, uh, you know, the brain generates the mind and the mind is entirely a product of the brain. You damage the brain and the mind is correspondingly affected. Um, Nobody doubts the latter. No. And I, and I think that we, you only have to visit a, you know, a head injury unit or speak to anyone who's got a relative who's had some form of brain disorder or damage and that, that just seems self-evident. Uh, I mean, to me, the brain is really, you know, a meat machine, a biological computer that runs a, a software, which is the mind. I think the, it probably has not changed, the brain has not changed that much in, in recent evolution. Uh, but clearly, the, the software it's running does change, and that's how culture uh, changes it uh, and shifts. But um, if that's the case, if it really simply is a product of a material system, then in principle, if you could rebuild that system, you should be able to recreate the mind entirely. And so this is the- Entirely, 100%. Yeah, because otherwise you'd have to have something else. You'd have to have some spiritual component to it. Some non-physical to non be- non-physical yeah, thing. Right, right, so, right. so this is the basis of the various thought experiments that philosophers typically enjoy uh, dealing hmm. with, uh, usually transporter machines that malfunction. So how does that work? Well, one of, the, one of the classics is to have a machine which transports you from Earth to Mars, and then you just, a little bit like Star Trek, I suppose, so you beam up to Mars, and on, on occasion, let's assume the teletransporter malfunctions, leaving you on Earth, but somehow rearranging molecules up on Mars to create an identical you with the same body, and most importantly, with the same brain. In those situations, the question- Down to the last atom, Exactly. spin of every electron is exactly the same. Exactly the same. Now, of course, I'm not saying that's ever possible, but it is an interesting idea yeah, sure, to consider sure. that, well, if that ever happened, where would you be? Well, you would say, I'm still on, on, Earth, on Earth. But then who is up there in Mars? I mean, would they have you know, the same mind? It's a kind of interesting conundrum to, to imagine. Well, uh, if you think about that, um, one answer is that if it's only because they both say the same thing. They would both say that I am the c continuing person, and I don't know who that other person is. Right, right. But if you're in Mars and you have to fly back down to Earth, then you know you can't be the original person. <laughs> so what happens? You suddenly lose your identity. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting in intuition pump, as they say. People who believe that there is something beyond the physical brain would say that that type of... Um, a scenario, different experiments, you could divide the brain in half and each go into a different body. Yeah. Uh, and since each half of the brain can be alive, each one would think it's the original person. Uh, and, and so they would say that since you can't answer that question, nobody can answer that question, mm. either with a brain or with a teleporter that doesn't work and it creates a duplicate, there's a further fact that you have to know. Because there is an answer. What's the answer? The answer is is that if you have a split brain that that uh, both people are really you, which doesn't seem logical, uh, neither are you, which is possible, or one or, or A or B. So mm. only four possibilities. It's not like a thousand, but there's only four possibilities. Mm. And one has to be right, and three have to be wrong if you would really do those experiments. Right. And so the argument is, is that there's a, there's a further fact that you have to know that you can't know from the physical world. Therefore, there's something beyond the physical. And I don't know how to answer that, to be honest. I, I, I think that's a line of logic which uh, has completely stumped me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, but I, um, I was trying to work those scenarios through. That was thrown at me a bit quickly. So, Okay, well, well you, to, to take it this way, um, the essence of... Uh, of the uh, of the claim that there is something non-physical, right? Is uh, it says that there's an there's this is there's an essence. There's something there. Uh, you you've done work that shows where these essences come from. Can can that 
help us in this process? What I've, what I've done work on is I've shown that children will make an assumption of a property over and beyond the material composition, the, the famous ship Theseus issue. Hmm. If you imagine that there's a ship and you, uh, it rots away, but each year you replace it with new planks, at what point uh, does it become a different ship? Most people assume continuity. It's hmm. the same ship. But then if you reassemble all the pieces you've taken away and you now have two ships, which is the ship of Theseus. Mm -hmm. So there is this intuition that there is some non-material property which confers identity. Mm. And it's not as simple as that because if you did it instantaneously, not rather gradually, then people um, mm -hmm. have a totally different intuition. And so the point is that you can shift these intuitions depending how you set them up. Mm, so right. for example, your intuition about the identity of the ship of Theseus depends on the extent or the way the, the transition occurs. Mm. So you have a totally different intuition depending on it being instantaneous as opposed to gradual. Yeah, th th that is a human construct that, that, that really has to do with the definition, but there's this big difference between an animate object and an inanimate object. An inanimate object, the ship of Theseus. Is there really? Oh, well, that's a good question. I mean, I, is there I a difference? There is... At what point do you die? I mean, is there a real? I mean, that's a definitional issue, okay. isn't it? That, so that I don't may think be a prejudice. Kinds... That's a good point. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm that has a prejudice. Maybe I'm building building in a prejudice that I I want something to be there. So, so what which, which your claim would be there'd be no difference between the ship of Theseus and and my body. So, if you replaced every neuron in my brain in the same way that you replaced it, that I'd be exactly the same person. I suppose what I'm saying is that the world is full of matter and, and, and continuous states of change and we chop it up into ways which make mm. conceptual sense to us. Mm. And the intuitions that you drive depend on what kind of baggage you bring to the, to the, to the question. Um, so I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer there, it's just... Well, the, there's always a right or wrong answer. To which question? To, to the question of uh, is there something non-physical about the mind? There's a right or wrong answer. Well, not one that we can prove. The, the Maybe I, I, I do. that's one step further. But there is a right or wrong answer. We may not be able never to know it, or you may never be able to prove a negative. But there is a right or wrong answer, and you know I may have a hope, and that may be totally wrong. Okay. <laughs> well, now we're getting to a realm of argument on the falsely right and wrong answers. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm way out of my comfort zone here, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to, to address this. Uh, there's a right and wrong answer to there being a material... Well, don't you need to be able to verify something for it to be right or wrong? That, that's very nice, and in most cases we do, and that is science. There's nothing, there's nothing in science that, you, that, that, that will violate the principle you just said. Nothing in science. Right. I agree with that, for sure. The question is, are there significant truths, like the truth of a, of a, of a non-material something connected with our mind, that is outside of science, that is true and non-verifiable? I'm saying that's a possibility. And for you to say that there's no possibility of that, you would have to believe that, uh, that a, a, ultimately a computer can be built out of any material Yes. That would be as wholly conscious as you are today. Well, yes, that would have to logically follow. Otherwise, I'd have to concede that there is a non-material yeah. property. And, and that's why... I, I think that's terrific because a lot of people don't do that. Right. A lot of people will say that the mind is just the brain. There's nothing non-physical about the, the mind. But then when pressed, they'll say they don't know if, 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 if a computer could, could ever be conscious. Well, then I would have to say that ultimately it, it, it would have to be. It would have to be. Absolutely. In the same way as a, you know, the you know, a thousand beer cans all sort of connected up and resonating just like a neural net would become conscious. Yes, because otherwise, well, what else is there? And if you're of a spiritual position, that's fine. You can have the soul and whatever non-material sort of elements you want to add right. to it. And the only way you can get out of a computer or, or, or a trillion beer cans or whatever not being conscious is to say there's something not physical about the mind to begin with. That's right. That follows. Well, we agree. We do agree. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure I was. I wasn't sure that I agreed. <laughs> okay. Cut. 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 Cut.